Hello, my name is uh, Dominic LaDuke. My name is Jacob Faber. My name is Ellie White, and I'm really happy to have had the chance to work as a Berkeley Study Research Intern this summer. I'm a rising senior at Oberlin College studying physics and philosophy. Currently a junior member of the Nanograph Collaboration, which is a shorter way of saying uh, the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves. In the past, I've also worked for the CHIME Collaboration, uh, which is the name of both the team of researchers and the radio telescope that they operate up in British Columbia, Canada. I am a second year physics major at Marshall University. Since I was 16, I've been doing a lot of student research with the Green Bank Observatory. I am an undergrad senior studying astrophysics here at Berkeley. Uh, I'm also working in uh, the Breakthrough Listen on the Breakthrough Listen project. Uh, specifically, I work with Vishal Gadger, and I'm developing a machine learning model to differentiate between whether uh, signals are these things called FRBs, fast radio bursts, or just radio frequency interference, which will be commonly referred to as RFI. FRBs are a mysterious phenomenon, to be sure. They're just these high energy pulses uh, that last for a very short duration. The current pipeline right now, there's a lot of false positives in them. So we, the program in its current state thinks that a lot of signals are FRBs when they're not. And so my direct work is to be able to say, oh, these are not actually uh, FRBs. This summer, I'm working with Vishal Gajar, a research scientist in the group, on developing a streamlined, semi-automated data processing pipeline uh, to run on the Breakthrough Listen compute server at the Green Bank Telescope. When you're dealing with fast radio bursts, you'd like as much information as you can get from your data so you can determine exactly which features are most valuable to your analysis. Um, so what this pipeline allows you to do is extract what we call baseband or raw voltages, which are basically the most information-dense form of data you can get from a radio telescope for FRBs that we would like to look at uh, more closely. Once the raw data has been extracted, it will enter a stage in the pipeline designed for what we call coherent dispersion, um, which is intended to correct for this frequency-dependent sweep in time uh, you see in your signal, which is caused by the passage of radio waves through a particular density of electrons in the interstellar medium between your telescope and the source. Um, then the final stage will be to perform some more intensive analysis techniques on our observations at full polarization, uh, which will allow us to investigate in greater detail their time frequency and polarization properties, and ultimately, hopefully, uh, characterize their progenitors as well as their emission mechanisms. So my project this summer uh, was to help integrate the Allen Telescope Array in Northern California uh, with GNU Radio open source software. So just to give a little bit more background, GNU Radio is used in a lot of industries relating to satellite communications, uh, radio frequency applications, digital signal processing, and so on. And it's becoming more and more widespread uh, in radio astronomy as well. Good Air Radio is really quite accessible. You can drag and drop signal processing blocks to do whatever you want into a flow graph. So if you can use GNU Radio to control the Allen Array or analyze data from the Allen Array, then this makes it a lot more accessible to students, educators, anyone, because anyone can download GNU Radio, um, load up some ATA data, Allen Array data, and, um, and make their own plot of Pulsar or um, the hydrogen line in the Milky Way or something like that. I'd also become entirely captivated by the mystery that is fast radio bursts while I was at Chime, uh, and I was really eager to keep exploring and more than anything wanted to be a part of this incredible, now global effort to discover exactly where FRBs come from. Um, there was also something a little freeing about adding the SETI component to it. Uh, it almost felt like a license to think a little more creatively. Are we alone in the universe? It's, and I don't know, I, yeah, I just got super interested in that. Like, what would other life look like? What would, how would we find it? And I mean, I feel like Breakthrough Listen and SETI in general is one of the few people actually investigating this question. And so I thought it would be um, really cool to be able to join them in their pursuit because, I mean, no one else is really looking for them. We have to start somewhere. SETI brings together so many different fields and combines them in ways that you don't normally think of. And in the process of doing that, it kind of triggers a lot of different thoughts about, well, how could we apply techniques and tools in astronomy that we could apply to other like major issues in the world? And for the perspective that it gives us, um, both on ourselves, our civilization, 
and our place in the cosmos.